Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 23rd. First up, this was sent by 1954 Shadow. This is the QF-16 drone program. What it is is they're taking some old F-16s that are ready to be scrapped or just basically used for parts to fix other F-16s and uh, uh, they're taking them and fixing them up to be remote piloted. Uh, what they're going to be is uh, pilots are going to be sitting in a control room and flying these things as test drones and because of the fact there won't be a pilot inside the craft they can go to a lot higher turn rates, they can do a lot uh, more strenuous maneuvers that an aircraft normally couldn't do with a pilot inside that has to stay conscious and they wanted to use these as a high performance test to be able to have fights um, of other piloted aircraft against them so in other words they would go up and uh, maybe dogfight dog fight type of uh, deals and stuff like that so that the pilots can get a chance of what it would be like to actually fight against uh, aircraft that are of very high performance. The engineers say they kind of have mixed feelings over this because they say it's great to see the old F-16s that haven't flown in a lot of years up in the air flying again but it's also going to be a little bit sad in a way because the whole purpose of getting them flying and uh, up in the air again is to just have them knocked out of the air and destroyed in uh, fights. But if it keeps uh, if it keeps our pilots safe and gives them some extra performance um, training to uh, fly against stuff that the enemies could possibly be uh, putting against us, um, it will all be for a good cause. And this is from uh, Boeing.com. As usual, all the links to all the articles I am talking about will be put down in the description box below. This next one is uh, LG TV spying on you. This was a technician, Jason Huntley, I believe his name was, uh, bought an uh, LG Smart TV and monitored the traffic on it. He noticed the traffic was uh, being not just coming from uh, the sources to his TV set to watch TV programs, but it was also going back to LG servers. Well, he looked on the TV settings itself and saw that there was a setting to turn it off. However, when he chose that setting and turned it off, the information was still being sent. As a matter of fact, not just the information of his channels that he was watching and his viewing habits, but if he plugged in a USB stick with some of his files on it, the server actually was able to retrieve the names of the files, the, the file names themselves, not the contents, but the file names of whatever it was he had on his uh, USB drive plugged in. He uh, contacted the LG customer service, and they seemed to kind of poo-poo it and say, uh, basically, when you open the box, you... Uh, that was part of the end user agreement and you're just subject to however you know however we're going to do it from here on you know they didn't seem too concerned about the fact that even if you turn off the setting that it would still send the same information back well uh, after his blog became public and shared by the news media all of a sudden LG's doing a little bit of a turnaround but they're still not really they're trying to kind of I don't know divert the blame or something like that it seems to me in the reply I mean they said there's going to be a firmware fix come out to make it so that these TVs when you do put it on the setting to not share your information that it will actually work finally but they also said well you can always if you don't want to share your information you can unplug from the internet well duh I think anybody that's halfway technical savvy knows that part but if you buy a smart TV isn't the whole purpose of it so that you plug the internet in so you can get your Netflix and Hulu and stuff like that I mean why else did you pay the extra for it so that's kind of disappointing especially because of the fact that uh, I was thinking that if in the future I should need another TV set when mine goes out, I was actually looking at the LG smart TV sets too. And this is, even though they say they're going to fix it, which they probably will, this is a little bit disappointing to me. Uh, this next one's from Brian West 58 There's a thing called Solo Shot. It's a kind of a robotic uh, following device is what you would call it. You put your camera on top of it and then it on top of the tripod and as you move around your camera can actually follow you the uh, if you go and click this link you'll find the price to be kind of high 479 bucks but if you refresh the page for some reason it just shows that way the first time and then you refresh the page and it drops down to 299 which is still rather expensive but um, I just think it's kind of cool to have some kind of a robot device as you move around or you want action shots and stuff like that it can uh, keep the camera pointed in the right direction and especially if you don't have somebody to work the camera uh, a lot of times when uh, we're doing our, our vlogs or moto vlogs or anything like that we don't necessarily have a camera person around to help us so having this kind of a robot tracker device to where your camera would still be pointed more or less directly at you as you're moving around I think it's a pretty good deal uh, and I think like everything else the price will probably come down or other people will have other copies of it in the future so anyway I think that's rather cool and the second one sent in by Brian West 58 as well. This is from the um, Stereo Science Mission. Uh, 
What it, uh, it's got two cool pictures here. First of all, a top view of the track that Comet Ison is going to come in and then come back around. Um, don't get kind of freaked out by it, though, because it looks like when uh, the Comet Ison goes back around, it's going to clip near Earth by this animated view. But actually, when it's coming back around and passes close to Earth, it's only going to be looking close from the down view. If you look at the side view, which is the picture below it, it's actually coming back at quite a steep angle. So it will actually be way over the Earth in distance, but still close enough that maybe we'll get some cool views of it and um, also it tells a little bit about the stereo mission and it's a very interesting mission because it's uh, two satellites in the same orbit as the earth just one ahead of us in orbit and one trailing in orbit so it forms more or less a triangle uh, viewing the sun and because there's three three different angles that you can view the sun at we always have a good view of it either from the Earth observing the Sun or one of these two stereo satellites. So we always have a really good view on the face of the Sun to track solar, solar storms and what direction they're going, how severe they are, um, things like that. And to also be able to use this in tracking Comet I-Sun is uh, really cool. So if you also get a chance, uh, you could easily go on Wikipedia and look at the stereo satellite mission. Very interesting. This next one is from my friend Desmo Alice. He was, uh, he'd watched some of my videos where I was talking, uh, some of the TDD reports where I was talking about how easy it may be in the future to just get a 3D printer and be able to print a functioning gun, either um, in the case of plastic guns, which they've done at first, or the case now where they're even printing metal guns that are fully functional, seem to be uh, pretty much as good a quality as anything produced uh, um, through a manufacturing company. Well, he wanted to make the point, too, and this video kind of makes the point, too. This guy is called, his channel's called Awesome Air Guns. And I'll put a link to it. He takes about 50 bucks worth of hardware stuff, if that. If you have some of this stuff laying around your garage, maybe you could make it for around 25 bucks. He makes a very effective air gun that shoots metal particles or medical projectiles. And from what he shows, and he doesn't even actually do this to the full extent it could be. He said his uh, compressor is limited. He can't put the air pressure in it that he would like to um, to make the gun function at its optimal. But still, um, the kind of metal projectiles he's been able to launch and the kind of penetration he gets in his tests, uh, I would think if you don't take somebody out, especially somebody maybe within the distance of inside a house or something like that, if you don't totally take them out, they're going to be very, very little function left in their body. They're going to have to be hauled away in an ambulance. It's uh, it's rather impressive. So, yeah, that's that's always the point that no matter what legislation's passed, no matter how much people try to limit what people are able to do, if somebody wants something bad enough, um, there's always a way to do it, and a lot of times there's a, a simple and expensive way to do it if people want to do it bad enough. And next up, this is a promo uh, for someone, uh, for a channel named Firestorm. Maybe Thomas brought this to my attention. This is a guy that's been doing a camera review of a camera. This is one I wasn't even aware of before. It's called the Ion Pro 3. It's an action camera. So check out his channel. And I like the fact, too, that his channel has a variety of subjects, too. He's into motorcycles, he's into prepping, and he's also into action cams. So if you get a chance, check out the Firestorm channel for a new action cam that I wasn't aware of. Maybe it's been around a while, but um, this is new information to me. Two other shameless promos. If you get a chance, Sign up for the new Moto Vlogging newsletter that's going to be coming out soon, I think in December. I'll put the link down below to that. Um, it's what by it's produced by one of our fellow Moto Vloggers, so no information is going to be used to spam anybody. You don't even have to use your entire real name. Just give us a, a, a regular email, and it's all produced and written by fellow Moto Vloggers. So check that out. And also a shameless promo for an event coming up in exactly one week next Sunday, the Polar Bear Challenge at polarbearchallenge.ning.com. Join us if you're a year-round rider and you want to be a part of it. If you want to learn about how to become a year-round rider, um, you can even go on the page. It's open to the public and you can watch. You don't have to even start a channel. But um, if you're interested, I'll have the link to that down below. Um, no TDD report next week because of Thanksgiving holiday. I'm going to spend the weekend uh, having a good time and hope everybody else does as well. I'll talk to you in two weeks.